What's up guys, welcome back to Golf Simulator videos. We're here to talk about a golf swing analyzer system. All right, this is a subject that comes up a lot in the channel. I have people that are looking to review their golf swing. I also have coaches and PGA professionals that are looking to utilize video analysis software, all right, with quality imagery and playback that they can coach from, okay? So I have a lot of subscribers in the channel that actually use the Foresight Sports GC Quad or GC Hawk, a lot of GC two owners as well and if you guys heard the news Bushnell has partnered with Foresight Foresight has designed a new system called the Launch Pro this is going to be a more entry-level price point uh, very exciting stuff coming on that unit I'm going to be covering it in the channel and I'll be sure to release that unboxing and first look video as soon as it's ready to go all right so stay tuned for that but if you own one of these Foresight Sports devices you most likely are using the FSX 2020 software all right this this software is actually very robust, has all kinds of options. I've shown it significantly in the channel, so make sure you check out those other videos. But it does have a golf swing analyzer system built into it, okay? You can use USB cameras, or you can use some higher end cameras that a lot of people actually aren't aware of, okay? So I've actually reached out to a company that is called The Imaging Source, all right? They manufacture cameras, and they have a driver that is uh, available to activate them inside of the Foresight Sports FSX 2020 software, all right? They partnered with Foresight Sports on this project and it's really cool, all right? So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the cameras that we'll be demonstrating today. I'll show them to you and talk about the lenses and the setup a little bit, okay? So the uh, imaging source camera that you'll be looking at is a, a one over 2.9 inch Sony CMOS uh, sensor, all right? That's the IMX273. It's a 1440 by 1080p, that's 1 1.6 megapixels, and it can do up to 238 frames per second. All right, global shutter, and then uh, trigger and IO outputs, and it's manufactured by the imaging source. What's cool about this camera is, is it's USB 3.0, which will make it very easy for most people to set this up. Now, do understand that there's a little bit of a constraint as far as cable length when you're looking at a USB 3.0 camera like this. But what's nice is, is I've already talked to the company. They've even been willing to offer a discount to my viewers. So as always, shoot me an email if you're looking uh, to get this type of setup. And what they do is they do a really nice consultation. They talk about your distances, make sure you're gonna get not only the cables that you need, but uh, the lenses that you need and talk about your various setup. Now, if you do need longer cables, they have options like Gig E, all right? So uh, it's a little more of a complex setup just because you're running network cable to your computer. A lot of people probably have a few available 3.0 ports on their PC, uh, whether it be a laptop or desktop. So uh, they're going to take you through that process, go through some of those things. Uh, no reason to get into that just because there's so many various setups out there. Okay, so I am using the USB 3.0 uh, of this camera today. I actually have multiple different lenses, all right? They actually have fixed lenses that are available, all right? That's a 2.9 millimeter. And then I also have a uh, varial focal lens that's available, which is 2.8 to 10 millimeter, all right? So what's cool is they have all kinds of different options depending on your environment. I think that's great. They can pretty much make it work for whatever you have, okay? So um, I do have various length cables as well um, because my camera that sits right behind me, it really just runs about I'd say about 12 feet or so um, along the wall up to my desktop and then my face on camera it doesn't even need much more than probably six to eight feet okay so um, I use a very inexpensive tripod from Amazon all right I can even put that link in the description below um, check those out because that's really all you need to mount these cameras okay and then simply run your cables and uh, you're gonna set up the driver uh, that actually is included as part of the FSX 2020 installation so if you've already installed that but they actually have their own drivers now what's cool is they even have their own software all right so the FSX 2020 software it has the ability to unlock these cameras at a max 120 frames per second Okay, now that's some pretty smooth slow-mo. I'm going to demonstrate it for you here in just a second. But if you want to unlock that full potential to 238 frames per second, okay, you can use their capture software that they have. You can discuss that with them. Like I said, shoot me an email. I'll connect you with them. All right, those guys are great, and they can take you through all of those details. But what I want to do right now is, is I'm going to set both these cameras up. I'm going to get my lighting all appropriate. We'll talk a little more about that as we take a swing and demonstrate what the video looks like. As always, if you guys haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel yet, please do. I appreciate 
uh, all of the views and comments and everything. Make sure you comment below any questions that you have, um, what your thoughts are, what you're using, all right? And we can discuss that further. I always do my best to answer every single comment I can. All right, so let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm gonna get this set up and we'll be right back. All right, guys, welcome back. We have our imaging source cameras set up. I have my face on camera sitting on the tripod I was telling you about. And then I have the rear camera actually using a little RAM mount mounted to my wall. Now, depending on your environment, how you're set up, this is seven feet from the ball to my wall. Um, you know, if you need to use a tripod, you absolutely could, very easy to do. I just wanna let you know how I have it set up. Okay, so um, lighting. Lighting's very important. If you want to maximize the quality, uh, the ability of the camera, you need the proper lighting. Okay. Now what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to brighten up the environment or the subject and not have to push the camera. All right. With, you know, pushing the exposure, which can actually, uh, cut down the shutter speed, uh, the ability to freeze each image. Okay. So 120 frames per second is one thing. That's how many frames it's capturing, but every frame, all right, how still it can capture it has to do with your ability to light the subject, not push the exposure, all right, and maximize that shutter speed, okay? So just understand how that works. I'm gonna show you my settings inside of here that I'm pretty happy with so far, especially just doing a really quick setup. I'm sure I'm gonna tweak them a little bit as we go, do a follow-up video with you guys, kind of give you some tips and tricks as I've learned along the way. But lighting, I have a very expensive, face on panel you probably don't need anything like this because behind me i'm actually just using a little cheap i think it's like a 59 dollar uh newer led panel now one key thing you need to understand these are video quality led panels why do you need video quality well they're actually non-flicker leds so when you use that fast frame rate and you're, you're playing it it's not going to flicker now on that subject anybody that's using a single chip DLP projector. If you ever tried to record in slow-mo, you may get, get flickering. Well, guess what? At 120 frames per second, all right, I'm not getting that. It's usually when you're off of the intervals of like 60, 120, et cetera. Um, and I've, I've shown you guys how that flicker actually is, uh, you know, kind of something that some people, you know, don't don't like. Some people do. It just depends. Now, if you have a three LCD projector, that can eliminate that if that's something you're concerned with. But this current setup, I think you're going to be very impressed with the video quality. And on that, let's go ahead and take a shot because we need to have uh, a quick shot in order to, for it to capture two video images for you guys. And I'll show you the setup and everything in there. It gives you live previews so you can tweak your images and everything. Um, it, it's really nice. So let's go ahead and take a quick shot. Throw a ball down there and show you guys the video. I think I pushed it a little bit. Not too bad though. Yeah, not a bad shot. All right, so now we can go over to our software and let's review how that comes up. Now what you're gonna do is, is you're going to go to these three trajectory lines. I don't think my camera is gonna be blocking anything. I'll pay attention if it is. So let's pull that up first. And now we're on the video tab. So it does look like it, it actually is just a little bit. So let me go ahead and take that down. So I can change this to quarter speed. All right, so it's defaulted at half. You guys can see that face on camera in quarter speed. Now here's what I also like. I can go back to the beginning. I'm going to play the video and I'm going to pause at the top. Here we go. And if you're a coach, or an instructor and you're looking for tools, check it out, FSX 2020 has you covered. All right, you have all kinds of various tools. So you're, you know, working that actually wasn't that good. You can, I'll show you how the eraser works. There you go. Um, if you're trying to circle someone's head, all right, do different things. It has all of those tools. And then you could either uh, go frame by frame if you wanted to and do different things. Now, check this out. What I noticed so far is my face on camera, the quality is really, really nice. All right, I'm seeing a tiny bit of club blur. Now that means that my shutter speed just isn't quite as high as I'd like it to be. Now, that's probably fine for most people, honestly. But if once you see the down the line camera, you'll see that I actually have it dialed in really nice. So uh, let's switch over to that camera after we kind of review the rest of this. I can hit this X right here and take away those tools. All right, so if you're doing that, just understand. I love how you have the data right above the video, so you don't even have to go to your ball, you know, or club data or table or anything like that. Um, you actually have a lot of data right there. Now, over in, I should say down in the lower left, see how it says one and two? 
that's where you're gonna pull up your other camera. I'm gonna switch that to quarter again. And I actually, uh, let's go ahead and go to the beginning. And then I'll hit play. And then I'm gonna pause it because I wanna show you guys if I go frame by frame, look how nice and clear I have the club. So you can see where that club is on takeaway. All right, and then I can go to the top. I can pause it again, look at what my top looks like. All right, I'll let you guys criticize my swing. All right, as most of you know, I'm not a PGA professional. I'm not a swing coach or anything like that. I actually have a swing coach and I talk to PGA professionals for lessons and everything else. So I'm a tech guy. So uh, I honestly don't try to analyze my swing myself that much. I actually send the data off to a coach and get their feedback or do lessons in the studio. But let's go uh, frame by frame now. And, and see what this looks like. I'm just clicking my mouse. I, I personally find it the easiest way. Look how nice and clear the club is. All right, I feel like that's a really good image. Look, how, look at that. I mean, all the way to impact, I can see my position. I can see where the club is. Really good quality. I mean, look at, look at it hit the screen. Notice I'm not getting any flicker on my projector. All right, that's that BenQ 935 ST I did the review on. Um, that's what I'm using right here. So just understand that. Um, you know, if you have this frame rate and camera system set up, you don't have to worry about that projector flickering at all. All right, so let me exit out of here and I'm going to go to the settings to show you guys how I have this set up. So I obviously have uh, the down the line pretty dialed in. Now, if you see the tabs up top where it says swing cam, you have camera one and camera two. You, you can select resolution, pixel format, and frame rate. All right, those are default. I would leave those, okay? And you can see I'm getting that maximum frame rate. Now you can see the measured frame rate. It's really nice. It's a live image, all right? So if you're dialing in your focus or anything like that, all right, you have a live image to work from. Now, once you hit properties, it gives you another live image. And honestly, I didn't even really change off to the left at all. I, I'm sure I could tune in the color and things along those lines. I just took the gain, I used a little bit of a gain, all right, and, and you have to be careful with gain. If you push the gain too much, it's gonna get very grainy. But notice how I took the exposure down. By actually lowering that exposure down, I was able to get that shutter speed, all right, to freeze each frame really nicely. So just understand those are gonna be key components when you're dialing in your camera for your environment, all right? And if you guys have any questions, obviously I want you to comment below. And obviously you could just reach out to the manufacturer. They're fantastic. Um, you know, they would help you. The guys at the Imaging Source, like I said, um, exclusive discount for my viewers. I want you guys to email me and I'll set you up with them and help you along the way. Because if you're using Foresight Sports and FSX 2020 and you're looking for a quality camera setup, uh, this is just fantastic. I mean, I think they're priced really affordably. Um, it's an easy setup. I mean, this is something I literally, by the time I started the video, and then maybe it took me 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And like I said, I did some uh, quick, you know, adjustments in there. I'm going to fine tune it. I'll probably do a follow up video for you guys. If I, you know, find some you know, tips and tricks for you, I'll let you know. But comment below your thoughts. Let me know what you're using now. Any questions you have about this system? I'd love to hear them. Um, and then also maybe uh, some criticizing of my swing. What am I doing right or wrong? I always love hearing what people's opinions are. You know, everybody sees a golf swing differently. Um, that's something like a golf analyzer system or software, I think is uh, fascinating to most people because you just get to see everyone's swing, compare them and uh, see how different everyone's swing is. It's amazing how so many different swings can perform so well or poorly for that matter, but um, I'm sure you guys have, have just, you know, seen all the professional swings and how they how they vary so much. It, it really is fascinating. So now you can do it yourself with FSX 2020 software. Like I said, if you're a coach or instructor, I mean, this is really uh, just such a huge value to you guys. This is packed into the software and you can set up a system like this on your own. So. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, comment below. I appreciate it as always, and we'll talk to you soon.